Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for joining us so early for our map projection talk. Um, some of you may notice that Tom Burney and I published a new map projection in August called uh, Equal Earth Projection. And uh, this morning, Tom and I were going to basically present you the projection. And uh, at the end of the presentation, Tom has a little cartographic surprise for you. So let's get started. Uh, first, uh, some few words about what motivates this project. Uh, in March last year, Boston Public Schools announced the switch to Galt Peters projection for uh, all classroom world maps. The news basically went viral and it was reported by major national and international media. Uh, the reporting was basically uh, based on the false fact that Peter's projection is the only equal area projection that we have. Uh, here on the slide, I'm just showing you how the Peter's map looks like, just in case somebody in the, some, someone in the audience is unfamiliar with the projection. Um, I don't want to go into details why the projection is not appropriate for small scale mapping. I think that this map explains it all. <laughs> uh, Artin Robinson and John Snyder uh, did a huge effort to discredit Peter's projection in late 80s, early 90s. Uh, here on the slide we have a famous uh, Robinson water, uh, wet underwear quote um, that actually expired uh, Wesley Jones to create this cartoon for Kent's uh, recent cartography book. Nevertheless, despite the ammunition of cartographers, uh, Peter's projection still pops up now and again and again. So it was about like a week after the Boston outbreak when uh, Bernie and I <laughs> when uh, Bernie and I got the email from Tom saying something and I quote motivated by recent news I start looking for a better equal area world map projection the options are not so good judging solely on appearance as an antidote for Galt Peters we should have a more visual accept, visually acceptable equal area world map to, to offer schools and social conscious organizations. Would you be interested in developing this projection? And of course, Bernie and I were like, yeah, let's do it. So now he's going to, I'm going to hand presentation to Tom and he's going to talk about the design. Okay, so uh, we got the big idea to make a, a new world map projection. Uh, where do we go uh, next? Well, the first thing we did was uh, we tried to decide what kind of projection we did not want to create. And we uh, quickly ruled out cylindrical map projections, such as the Hobo Dyer, uh, thinking that the world does not need to see another map in a box. We ruled out uh, interrupted uh, projections and also those with very curious shapes, such as the bond. So those types of projections were completely off the table. Now, I have to admit, we do have a certain fondness for uh, pseudo-cylindrical projections. We like them because the, uh, the parallels are straight. You can make latitudinal uh, comparisons ac across the, uh, the globe. But what we really like about pseudo-cylindricals is that they have um, curved lateral meridians that mimic the spherical uh, form of, of Earth. So let's look at some of the uh, pseudo-cylindrical equal area map projections that are available. The, uh, the first two at the top are uh, notable because they have pole points. Uh, and that's a good thing because uh, the North and South Pole are indeed uh, points. And uh, one, one good thing about having pole points is Antarctica actually looks uh, somewhat circular in shape. So there's some advantages to these, uh, these type of pole point pseudo-cylindrical projections. There's a couple disadvantages. Um, one of them is that uh, they're very inefficient when uh, printed on a rectangular map sheet or viewed on a, a rectangular computer screen. And uh, another issue is look how the meridians converge very steeply on the poles, especially in, in the Northern Hemisphere and in Europe. Um, as a cartographer making a reference map, there simply isn't enough room for placing labels. So that's, that's a, a cartographic issue. Well, uh, down at the bottom, uh, a solution to that is to create a pseudo-cylindrical equal area map with short uh, pole lines. Uh, labeling is a lot easier and, uh, to do on these. 
But there's a, another problem with these. Uh, Boyan and others in 2015 conducted a, uh, a world map uh, user preference um, study, and they found that uh, you know projections such as these with bulging lateral meridians that uh, both cartographers and map readers did not like them aesthetically. There was just something about I guess this kind of midriff bulge that people did not like. <laughs> so. You know, moving on, I, th I think many of you, if you had to select uh, an equal area uh, world map projection to use, would select one of these. And they're, they're really not bad choices at all. Um, but I would, al I would also add that they're probably not optimal either. Looking at the, uh, the Eckert 4, uh, it, notice that it's highly rounded. It does not have uh, corners on it. And when you remove the graticule from this projection, it looks capsule-shaped, almost like an amorphous blob. So it doesn't have uh, a, a nice identifiable form necessarily without the graticule. And then the, uh, the Wagner 4, or Wagner 4 if you prefer, uh, is uh, I, I think a little bit closer. It has the, has the, uh, the, the corners. But in Boyan's user study, uh, he found that people did not like how much the lateral meridians bulged out on this one. Um, so anyway, so we, we surveyed all the pseudo-cylindricals, and what we decided to do was to create something in the middle, okay? And, and looking at this, uh, you know, I would argue that there's slight improvements uh, in the projection that we came up with, uh, but, they're, but they're not great. But there's a, a really big advantage to coming out with a new world map projection. And that is, we get, got to name it. Nowadays, <laughs> nowadays when uh, you know, promotion and marketing is, is so important, by giving it a new name, Equal Earth, that's kind of catchy, we could create buzz with this and get it into the consciousness of cartographers and uh, map users alike. One of the things you'll you probably noticed is that the Equal Earth has a certain resemblance to the uh, the much beloved Robinson projection. The Robinson projection, of course, is not equal area; it's a compromise projection. Uh, early on in the project, we decided we wanted to mimic the uh, the Robinson projection as closely as possible. Now, because the Equal Earth is equal area, we couldn't do that exactly. You'll notice that there's the, the continents in the mid-latitudes and tropics are a little bit more elongated, and polar areas are a bit uh, flattened. But I think if someone saw the equal Earth in isolation, they might possibly mistake it for the Robinson projection, which is a good thing, I think. So how did we, uh, how did we uh, conjure up the equal Earth projection? Uh, Bernhard Yenny, uh, who's not with us today, I think he's uh, traveling in Europe right now and hopefully watching us as we're uh, doing this, he came up with a, a tool specifically for this project. And it's based on a recent technique developed by Dan Strebe. And what you can do with this technique is take the forward and inverse uh, equations of equal area projections, mix and match them, and come up with a hybrid projection that's also equal area, okay? So uh, let's look at what we did. We, uh, we found through trial and error, we were going through dozens of different projections, the, that the Putin's uh, P4 and the Eckert 4 projection provided a, pr a pretty good starting point for creating what would become the equal earth projection. Now, uh, Bernie also put these very handy sliders into his, uh, into his tool for scale factor and stretch factor. And look, look what happens when I just tweak those values just, just a little bit. All of a sudden, it's looking more Robinson-like, okay? Now, of those two um, sliders, it's the, uh, the stretch factor that was especially critical. Uh, a lower value of 0 0.97, you can see how that creates a very nice compact uh, uh, earth shape. But look how the, uh, the continents are a little bit too elongated on the, uh, the north-south axis. And of course, the, uh, the, the opposite situation at 1.07, the continents are no longer uh, stretched north-south, but the entire map is, is elongated horizontally, and that we found that unacceptable. And so we came up with the Goldilocks solution at 1.02, right in the middle. So at that point, we had the map graphically designed, and we had an arduous task ahead of us. Uh, equations had to be written um, for this uh, 
new equal Earth projection, and Boyan's going to be telling you about that right now. Thank you, Tom. I hope this works. Okay, so uh, when developing the mathematics uh, for uh, equal Earth projection, we took five projection properties into account. Starting with first, projection has uh, straight pole lines. Uh, to achieve that with the mathematics, we basically renumbered geographic latitudes to some sort of parametric latitudes uh, using the equation provided on the slide. The next property uh, that came very useful is that uh, projection has straight and unequally spaced parallels. Now, with the, uh, mathematically, what it means is that the y equation is some sort of function that solely depends on geographic latitude. In our case, the is going to depend on parametric latitude. Next step was basically approximating uh, the spacing between the parallel and the equator. Uh, in that uh, phase, we took into consideration that projection is symmetric uh, across the central meridian and the equator. Um, we basically used a uh, least square adjustment method uh, to model that distances and came up with the polynomial equation that solely uh, depends on the powers of parametric, uh, parametric latitude. Next, very useful property uh, of the projection is that uh, meridians are regularly distributed across every single parallel. Again, in mathematics, this means that the x equation is going to be uh, some sort of linear function of ge geographic longitude. Um, and finally, to find out, to came with the final x equation, we use the most important property, and this is the equal area condition. Uh, we plug in the x and uh, y equations, we turn around the equations, get the solution out, and we came up with the final equations for the equal earth projection. Um, the equal earth projection uh, is already available in the software and the uh, uh, projection libraries that are listed here on the slide. Um, I think it's like really amazing to see how fast projection has been adapted. Uh, I think like an hour after we tweet about it, Mike Bostock already had first implementation. Uh, so, uh, on this spot, like, we would really like to thank every single uh, person who took the effort and implemented the projection to the software. Okay, and now back to Tom. Thanks, Boyan. Uh, all your mathematics look really good to me, I'll have you know. So. <laughs> Okay, uh, you'll recall that the motivation for this project was to uh, create an alternative to the, the Peters world map. And you know, publishing the Equal Earth projection was phase one of the project. Phase two was to um, create a world map, uh, make it available online for free for people to download and print as many copies as they want. And that's what I'm gonna talk about uh, next and I'd like to show that map to you. It's a uh, political uh, map of the world. It's, uh, it's aimed at primarily at, at, at schools. So I wanted to keep the, the colors ni nice and bright and, and colorful. Uh, you know, you'll see you know, country boundaries, capitals, and so forth like that. You'll also notice that it has a, a lightly printing shade relief. It's one of my maps, of course, it has to have a shade relief. Uh, you know, a smattering of physical uh, labels and cultural regions are also um, shown on it. Let's go to the east to a more watery part of the world. Uh, you'll see that we made extensive use of uh, vignettes in our, in our map design. I'm trying to make the, the map as visually appealing to uh, everyone as possible. Uh, we want this to be very easy on the eyes. Let's, uh, let's go to Europe. This is, this is kind of the problem area on an equal area world map. Europe becomes uh, relatively smaller, and as you know, there's just a lot of stuff in Europe that needs to be labeled. Uh, when we were doing the type on this map, uh, we did Europe first. We ended up using uh, condensed type and, and other type with very tight tracking just to get everything to fit into all of these very small countries. It was, for Boyan, it was very important that Slovenia, Slovenia be labeled and, and very clear. So. Uh, so once we got um, the t you know, typographic style for uh, Europe settled, we used that same style for the rest of the map. 
let's look at the, uh, the map in its entirety. Uh, it's available online as a, uh, a high quality JPEG download. It's 350 DPI. It measures 55 by 29 inches in size. So this is a, a pretty big map. And of course you could print it at whatever size that you want. Uh, but you know, foolproof uh, file format that anyone can, can download and use. You'll see the map is, is, is very clean. It's, it's a map. There's no extraneous information in the margins um, at all. We just wanted to keep this thing uh, clean and very nice uh, looking. Now, you know, it's, you'll notice that it's, it's centered on Greenwich, you know, the standard for a lot of world maps. And uh, you know, that, that works out pretty good for most of the world. But look at New Zealand. It's, it's kind of marginalized on the side, and they've been complaining about that in, in recent months. So we thought we'd, we'd do a solution to that. We created a second version of the map that people can download. It's, it's centered on 150 degrees east. So this map has an Australia, New Zealand, and East Asia uh, focus. Notice that the uh, Pacific Ocean is completely intact on this map. Now, all, all you know, maps, regardless of where you center them, have a trade-off. And in this case, look at South America. It's leading back a little bit. Almost looks like it's going to do the limbo. So uh, we, we thought we needed to do something about that. And so we created a third version. <laughs> and this is centered on 90 degrees uh, west uh, on the Americas. And again, this, this version, has, the Pacific Ocean is uh, still intact. But look what happens to Asia. It's bisected by the, uh, the, the lateral uh, meridians. OK? So three versions of the map, regardless of where you live in the world, I think we have you um, covered. So, um, we have a, a, a website uh, that we just launched um, this morning. This is the grand announcement for it. The website is equal-earth.com. Go there, grab the maps. I'll also note that the maps, are, in addition to the JPEG images that are aimed at the general public, there's Adobe Illustrator files that are completely layered there. These, again, these things are in the public domain. You're invited to download these maps, modify them however you uh, want, so just kind of go for it. And one last thing about the, um, the, the maps is, you know, the maps are now in, in English, uh, and we would love to have uh, other languages, uh, translations of the maps out there. So, if, you know, if any of you uh, are, want to, we would love it if you would uh, translate into languages other than English, especially Spanish. That would be a really nice one to get out there um, sometime soon. Okay? So that's the, uh, the Equal Earth uh, projection and Equal Earth wall map. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Tom and Boyan. I think we have time for like one question. If, if someone shoots their hands up really quick, and th here's the person. And please uh, let me bring the microphone for you for purposes of streaming. If I can do this without making a ton of noise. There we go. All right, Don. So just to play shill, the mathematical formula were already implied by the source projections you hybridized. Why did you then come up with an approximation for it? Well, the reason why we did that is um, it, the formula that was used for the design uh, included forward, inverse, and another forward. Uh, and if I recall correctly, uh, echo projection requires iteration as well. So the equations were very complex. So it's very hard to implement uh, into the software. So we basically said, OK, let's make it simple and easy to use. That's the reason. Okay, once again, everyone, let's thank Tom and Boyan for their nice presentation.